One of the things I really like about Fusion 360 is we've seen a lot of folks start using CAD that, that didn't use it before. That's really cool. After the open house, uh, Adam Booth stuck around for a few days and we were talking and I thought, you know, I'd love to see, I feel like he's a perfect example. You know, he's been a machinist his whole life, but he hasn't used CAD and would it help? We've also had a lot of people say, hey, I really want a good basic intro video on Fusion 360. So let's see if we can kill two birds with one stone. Adam's been working on this parking attachment for his Kearney and Trekker manual mill, this pretty rugged heavy piece that's gonna hold the vertical head. And there's one piece uh, you can see right here that he was asking if we could uh, CNC machine for him, make it a little easier. And I thought, well, hey, this is awesome. Adam didn't have the dimensions or the print or the part with him, but we, all we had was this photo uh, still shot from the video. But he knew the part in his head. So we sat here and we banged this part out pretty close and we're gonna do a video series on it. You know, he already sent us back a marked up drawing once he got back to Florida, which is awesome. But what I wanna do today is walk through how do you make this part close enough to get started so that you can, uh, you can you know, add your, so that you can change your dimensions, make it work. And you know, the cool thing here is you don't necessarily have to use CAD to drive a CNC mill. It can be really helpful for me. I'm not a super creative person just to go through the process of understanding the material you're gonna use, how parts are gonna work or be made or fixtured and so forth. So let's dive in. I'm in a new file in Fusion 360. First thing I always recommend is to click save and we'll do a bomb parking attachment. The reason you click save is that starts auto saving the file in case your computer crashes or fusion crashes. Right click, new component. A component is basically a part and we can go into that in future videos. We'll call it parking attachment. It's not necessary to create a component, but please do. It helps you. And again, we'll talk about that later. So we've got this shape. You can kind of see it goes up and then tilts over and um, comes back the other way. And it's got big full radiuses on the side. So again, I'm focused here on not getting the final part, but just getting something that's enough that we can go back and forth over email or the phone or whatever and, and get this thing nailed down. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut L for line. And when it does that, it says select a plane that you want to sketch on. So blue is pointing toward the sky or Z. So if you think about it, if you're holding a part in a standard vise, the spindle is straight up. So this would be say like the top of your vise. This doesn't actually matter when it comes to the cam side, you can override this, but it's good to do it in the right orientation if you think of it. So we've got the part sketched. I'm gonna kind of rotate it 90 degrees in my head. Um, so over, down, and flatten out. Let's see here. So over, down, flatten out. So everybody see that? Over, down, flatten out. Over, down, flatten out. Come down again. So hit L again for line. And click. And I'll just click this little green, see that little check bar? That stops me from sketching, or keep sketching a line. So I got that thing, come back, come back. And then it was a little t twist forward here and here. Is that the right direction? Yep. So pretty close to the overall shape. Over here under your sketch constraints, these are really powerful things that help control what your sketch does. So see right now my mouse cursor has a little line tool next to it. Uh, it's a little circle curve with the um, line. I don't want to be sketch any more lines. So I'm going to go up here and click select. And that takes me out of the line tool. So again, if I hit L, see how my cursor changes to having the little whoop thing. Um, you can also hit escape on the keyboard and I'm kind of back into this mode and I could actually take and drag this stuff around. But again, so see how that line's not correct. There's a number of things we could do to fix that. There's a horizontal vertical. So if I click that once, and I come over here and I click this line, it snaps it vertical. I'll undo that by control Z. I could also click perpendicular. And let's say I want this line to be perpendicular to that line. 
same thing. So any of them work. I'm gonna hit the D key for dimension and I'll click here, here, and that's gonna dimension the overall part, which we thought was about eight inches. And if we hop back and forth here, we can see, let's add a few different dimensions that should help get this thing pretty close. Close enough. Hit Q, the keyboard shortcut to press pull. I'm gonna pick that plane and it's gonna ask me the distance to extrude, let's say two inches. Click OK. We've now got a 3D object. Awesome. We've got to round both edges, modify fillet. What edges do we want to fill it? Just click one, two, three, four, and I'll do them as full radiuses. So that's, if it's a two inch side thickness, I'll do one inch fillets. And you can see that gives us our shape. So now it's actually starting to look like that part. C for circle. And it says, what, where, where do you want to sketch this circle? Select a plane. I want to put a circle right up here. So I'm going to click this plane. And see when I hover around, it snaps to a circle right there. Perfect. That means that circle is concentric with the outside of our part, which is awesome. And I like to just place a circle. Now come back, hit the D key, and dimension it. And we'll say that's a 0.75 inch circle. Q to press pull, click and drag through. Boom. I'll do the same thing over here. Q, press pull. And the last thing I'll show you, you take a close look. Actually, it's kind of hard to see, but the um, top of the thinner section out there actually has a circular sort of section that comes up and that's really easy to do. I'm going to hit C for circle. I want to sketch a circle on this plane and if I click here, see again we've got that concentric um, sort of ring that shows it's snapping to the middle. I'll drag out and I can even snap it to match our two inch here. Q to press pull. Click this and say point, say 1875. And now you've got that little boss at the end. Awesome, right? So I'm gonna wrap it up there. The point here hopefully was that you guys could see a sort of basic introduction to Fusion 360. Whether you wanna use it to help create parts, to sketch and think in your head, to send something out to a, to a job shop or a friend, uh, a really useful tool, I was really um, I'm kind of curious to see, and I was kind of saying, hey, Adam, would you, would you use this? Is this you know, useful for you? Um, I know he's a manual guy. I'm not trying to convert him over to, to CNC, um, but we'll see. And I, I was really happy that he asked us to help with the project. Should be really cool. Um, we're going to uh, do some more videos on this project. And like I mentioned, he uh, got back home and marked up this print. So we're gonna go back in and edit these to match perfectly. We've got some champers. And it's a pretty big hunk of steel. It's, it's bigger than I, I normally work with on the Tormach, so we'll see if we run into any problems making it. If you haven't seen uh, Adam's channel or the parking attachment series, definitely check him out. Uh, Adam's a really good machinist. He's got an incredibly successful channel, and, and for good reason, he's a good guy. And it's a really interesting channel, entertaining, but you learn a lot. So I would encourage you to check his channel out and subscribe. Otherwise, we appreciate the thumbs up, subscribing, and commenting below. Take care. See you next Friday.